Hey guys, it's Ann. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I, uh, my channel is mostly about worm composting and home worm farming. And in particular, I'm pretty um, invested in trying new ways of worm composting and also, you know, finding different things I can feed my worms to keep them out, uh, keep the food out of the landfill. All right, so one of the things, everybody's favorite bin here is blue. And what we're going to do here today is I'm just going to run you through the paces of what we do to take care of Blue, which is a 55-gallon bin that uh, started out as a food-grade barrel that was cut lengthways and then put together in the middle. Now, believe it or not, um, this bin will cycle 600 pounds per year of castings. That's a lot. I have a lot of flowers, I have a lot of vegetables and fruit trees, and I use every darn bit of it. I don't sell it, and I don't sell the worms. They got a job to do. <laughs> so, I want to explain to you why you might want to have a 55 gallon worm bin, and I'll put the metric uh, conversions below. So, the length of time that it takes to get this thing fully full is probably about a year, but I can start harvesting castings in about six months. Now, one of the reasons why this bin is so very useful, and I'm just going to keep talking as I'm going through here, and I'll show you what I do. So, as it gets to be time to harvest the bin, I go through and I sift the very top here. And that's the stuff that has already had the worms move out of it, as well as having a chance to dry. And all of the things that take a super long time to, you know, process like peach pits and bark and any sort of seed or whatnot that takes over six months. I sift it and then I put it down at the business end of the bin and then this is what I'm left with. So I just keep going like this and you can see when I stop here for a second what I'm left with. Now this is a one quarter inch screen and this is how I like to use my castings. Anything else I think is not processed enough and I want that to go back through the bin another time. It also helps, I do have a link for these in the uh, description below. Uh, I've been using these for five years for not only bonsai soil but also for um, worm castings. And bonsai soil, I sift um, very heavy, very um, sharp items. And so, you know, these have really held up. I don't give out compliments easy, but these things are troopers. So, as I continue to do this, um, you can see there's very few worms. There might be some roly polies or a couple of worms, but not very many. And so, one of the benefits of that is that. You know, it is stressful when you harvest a worm bin and you um, light harvest or water harvest or anything of that kind. It is a little stressful on the worms and it kind of can make them a little crazy for a while and make them crawl out of the bin. So this is one of the benefits of having a bin where you just um, harvest a little bit off the top every week or so and that way the worms have a chance to get out of it. It has a chance to dry so it goes through the screen really well and then you know the worms aren't stressed out and you can get a more you know usable harvest when you're doing it. You can do this in a smaller system um, but I think that it's better to I have them in smaller systems but one of the things that's great about Blue is that he just keeps on giving and it gives the, the castings a chance to finish up and mature and lets the, the cocoons hatch. Now I'm getting probably less than 50% right now when I'm doing this sifting. So it's not a great return right now. But I do put almost everything that we consume in the house in the spin. So it is to be expected that very hard things um, will not, you know, get composted in the three to six months that it has been sitting here. So, it's okay. 
that uh, this goes back through another time. This is, even though it's not a vertical con continuous flow through, it's a uh, horizontal uh, flow through. So I just keep taking things off. And then the next time I come around, this part will be dry enough and the worms will be out of it. Because if you sift when it's too wet, things tend to ball up into little pea-sized uh, balls that are, you know, kind of like this, only that's a pit. But basically, you're not going to get the harvest that you should if it's too wet when you try and harvest it. And for me, I don't want this to go in my garden or my raised beds, so it's going to go back through. I'm going to move this down a little bit, see if I can get a little bit off this part here. And then we will start looking and seeing what Blue is doing. So, as you can see, I'm just sifting back and forth, kind of tilting the pan. I've never, uh, you know, panned for gold or anything, but I do sift a lot of soil. So I do uh, have an evolved technique. You know, back and forth, front forward, kind of flipping. No, this is really not super important, but, you know, if you're wondering how I do it, there you go. I think that's about all I'm going to get out of this that I can keep. So I probably got less than a gallon of castings. But uh, I do have a home for these in the garden right now. Now blue here, for the most part, and we're just going to go through, go through the bin to make sure that it's turned over so that I can get this to dry out for me so I can do more harvesting. <clears throat> for the most part, blue gets my prepared uh, paper bedding. That is shredded paper, shredded cardboard, and um, coconut coir. It's about 80% of the paper cardboard mix and about 20% of the coconut coir. I find the coconut coir keeps it loose because uh, the paper bedding and the cardboard bedding I think whatever it is that they use to make cardboard with is kind of gluish, and that really does show up, you know, in your bin, especially when it's a little overly wet. It does get sticky, and when it gets sticky like that, it does not dry very well. So it's best to have some sort of component to the bedding that does not contain glue-like substances. So blue is also run in the wedge method. So as you can see, I'm going through it, and then I'm moving this finished part over. So we did take out about a gallon, so that's going to leave some room here. So I know some people are like, you know, the worms aren't really enjoying what you're doing here, lady. Well, there's not a lot of worms at this end in comparison. If you're new here, wait till we get to the other end and you'll see the volume of worms. We have about 20 pounds of worms in this bin. So as I move things over, um, that you know gives everything a chance to dry, but as you see there's really not a lot of worms here right now. That's because I moved that way to get to the food. So we're starting to get into this middle section here where it is wetter and it is also newer. I would say that the feedings for this part here are on the order of a month or two old. And look at the difference in the population of the worms. They are still actively working this section here. I also, when I find things that are um, obviously not going to get done anytime soon, like sticks and whatever. I move those down to the, to the more active end, where there's a higher concentration of worms and bacteria. And you can see I'm getting into some pretty mucky um, castings here, which is one of the reasons why I do this very thorough um, fluffing, as some people call it, uh, probably once a month. It is 60% humidity in the basement. Last time we checked in, it was 50. The furnace is no longer kicking on. It was 100 degrees this last week. So um, it's been, it's 70, almost, it is 77 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement right now. So that is nice and warm. These worms are loving it. 
This is a mix of the uh, blue worms, the red wigglers, and the European night crawlers. But if I had to guess, I would say that it is probably, you know, only 10% of the European night crawlers. The uh, blue worms and the red wigglers outbreed them or outcompete them quite a bit. Yeah, when you're looking at things, you can see that they, they are mostly the red wigglers and the blue worms. So I'm not sure if you can see it from your angle, but this stuff over here is very dark. And this part here that I'm getting into is much lighter, and that's indicative of the paper bedding that I use. If I used leaves for a primary bedding, then this would also be very black. Okay, so we're finding a little bit of food here. That might be pineapple leaves. So we're just going to keep on moving down the bedding that's on top that's dry moving over the finished stuff. And this is just the process of doing the wedge like this. So I will keep flipping here. And now you can see the closer I get to where I feed, the worm density is much, much more. All right, let me move you down so that we can concentrate on the business end of the bin. If you're enjoying this video so far, why not give it a muddy thumbs up? If you're not a member of my worm family, join it and click that subscribe button right now. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, make sure that bell icon has been clicked. Okay, so this part here is probably only a month or so old. So you're seeing a lot, a lot, a lot of worms here. And some bigger, this is a lemon. It's about half... You can tell it's squishy, but it's definitely not been um, finished yet. You do see that lemons, especially big ones, and they were a little dried out when I put them in here. They take a month or so in um, a bin like this. Now that it's getting warmer, I'm going to have to check on blue more often. Because honestly, the 20 pounds of worms in here are going to start going through food much faster than they would in the winter. So I have to keep a little closer eye on them as the temperature goes up so that these guys don't go hungry. All right, so you can see that this is much, much wetter here. You can smell the lemons. Um, there's no bad, um, bad smell or anything. But in, my, in line with my you know, mission to see what everything I can feed the worms, um, you can see that the worms are not having any problems with the lemons at all. They don't appear to be avoiding them. I think, I don't know if that's a lemon. Yeah, that's a lemon. Um, they don't appear to avoid them or anything. So I think there's some urban myths that go with some gardening sometimes that I think just get perpetuated by people because they think worms are like people and that we wouldn't want to have acidic things on our skin. Now granted, if it gets super acidic, I'm sure it is not happy for them, but oops, hey, we got a worm ball. I think this is from the juice from the lemons underneath. But you can see the worms that I have in this bin are not very big, and uh, that's okay. That's totally, I think that's a little pumpkin, but that's okay. Um, you know, if I fed them grain and things like that, they would get very big, very fast. But the, the point of having a big bin like this is so that it can process a lot of my, my junk mail, my Amazon boxes or Walmart boxes or whatever uh, shipping container things I have. And so, you know, that's the point of this. It's not to grow worms to sell or anything like that. So we're going to just keep moving everything over. Anything that looks like it's going to take a while. Again, it goes down to this end. I think one of the good things about bins that are this big is that they do buffer things. It must be coffee. So, you know, if there's too much moisture or not enough moisture, the worms have a lot of real estate here to go someplace else that's more comfortable for them. You know, and if there was something in the bin that was uncomfortable for them, they would have someplace else to go. Um, oh, here's me and my sticks. Whenever there's dead plants, um, I overwinter things in my basement, and if something doesn't make it, I do throw them in the worm compost. 
it's on order of years that they will have to take care of them, but you know, whatever. You can see a really super blue worm there. I don't know what makes some of them really, really blue and some other ones not so blue, but that's, I mean, that is like black cherry. If you're looking for a color comparison, this one here near my thumb. Pretty worms. <laughs> I know, the rest of the world is like, what are you people doing? So we're getting through here. This is a lot of just bedding. You can tell junk. Oh, there he is. He's right on my arm. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So cool. You're so pretty. I right, get down there and eat. All right. So we're getting we're getting to the end here. We're still moving things over. This is mostly bedding at this point. We're seeing a few seeds from avocados. Obviously, we found a couple of those lemons. So, you know, it's, it's almost like this bin never really does get a chance to be full, full, because I'm constantly taking out the stuff at that end and uh, moving it over. Ooh. Well, kind of a one. We'll see. We'll get the paper bedding here. We'll see if there's a, usually down here at the far bottom, there's a worm ball because this is where all the liquid goes. So all the good juices from all the food I put in here, let's see if we can get a worm ball out of this. Yep, there you go. All the juices, kind of this is sloped this way a little bit. That wasn't really on purpose. I think my house is sloped that way. But uh, it does work, you know. So the worms, so there's a ton, a ton of worms in here. You can see how many worms are in blue. Look how crazy that is. But they are at the business end where all the food is, and they are slowly depopulating the beginning end, which is good when you're trying to harvest, right? So we've got all of these wormies. Oh, look at that. Just, I don't know. If you're watching this video and you're already, if you're still to this part, then you just love worms and you're excited about worms and all the cool things they can do also. Um, <laughs> so, worm nerds, unite. So let's see what we've got. We've got all of our leftovers here. We've got a little bit of lemon. And we'll just put the bedding stuff. You know, I don't know what that is. Some kind of greens. But we'll put all the, the stuff that's definitely not done right here. And what we do have here, these little crumbs, these dry crumbs, this is everything we sifted from before. So being that it is at this end of the bin, where all the moisture kind of gravitates towards, um, all those will get moist all over again. All right, well look at all this space we've got. Let's feed them up. All right, so this is some bedding that's been sitting in a bucket for a while. It's pretty wet. Uh, that was on purpose. I had some drippings from one of CeCe's buckets, so I just made uh, bedding with the drippings. So let me get them some real food now. Okay, this looks like a lot of bread. Again, peppers, bread, potatoes. Somebody is not finishing their pita bread, CeCe. All right, so it's not a, a huge feeding. I don't know. What do you think? They could probably use some more like long-term food because this isn't going to last with 20 pounds of worms. Let me go get them some more. More bread. No, I still don't think it's enough. I guess it's going to be a carb day. I don't know. They're, it's their cheat day. They're going to have carbs. Okay. I know some of you are like, this is totally gross, but it's not. It's just bread that I've been soaking. So, okay, it's totally a carb day. Let me kind of wash my hands off the castings. I need to leave my hands in here so the worms can get my hands clean. Now let's get them a lot of drier bedding to cover this, because otherwise, that apocalypse is going to happen all over again. First bucket's going to be the dry stuff. That way it can absorb things. And then this is the regular prepared bedding. 
We're doing kind of deconstructed bedding at this point because I didn't have enough to finish this bin today. So that's coconut coir. And then we're going to top it off with just shredded paper. So that has done a lot to fill up blue right now. But you wait. We'll come back in a couple of weeks and all of this bedding and all of this food, it's going to compress down to this. That's what the worms do. We've got the brand new stuff here. We've got the in-process stuff here. And then beyond that is the stuff that is finished. All right. Well, if you want to see more about blue, I will put the playlist right over here. And if you want to see what happened before, I'll put it right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.